So I have some bad news for software engineers and programmers. This could be, and I think it is, the end of remote work in the tech industry as we know it. Amazon just announced that they're basically ending all remote work completely. Like everyone has to go back to the office, no questions asked or you're fired basically. And I think this is the start of a trend that is pretty much going to continue in the entire industry. And there's already a bunch of other companies like Goldman Sachs, Boeing, UPS, Tesla that have followed suit and done exactly the same. So today we will talk about why are companies like Amazon doing this? Why are they ending remote work? Number two, is this really the end of remote work in the tech industry or what do I think is going to happen in the future? And number three, how can you still work remotely as a developer if that is the reason why you're getting into coding? Because as much as the trend is not good, there are ways around this as a programmer, but we'll get back to that later. By the way, if you're looking to get into tech, whether as a remote developer or as a traditional developer working in the office, if you have even a little bit of cash to invest into your career and your series, I absolutely recommend that you go through an actual premium resource, like for example, conveniently, my course, Python Developer Bootcamp, where I essentially just hold your hand and take you through the entire process from start to finish on everything you need to learn to become a Python developer in 2024. And I will also handhold you and give you everything you need when it comes to building your resume, applying for jobs, LinkedIn, like literally everything you need as someone who has worked for some of the biggest companies in the world. That course will be linked in the first link in the description down below. And you can even use the code Python for a special discount only for you if you're watching this video. With that, let's get into the video. So why are companies doing this? Well, the sad cold hard truth about this is that remote work was never really the norm. It was almost kind of forced down on companies by the COVID pandemic. When the COVID pandemic hit, all the companies were forced to shut down their offices. And luckily, programming is the kind of job that actually does work kind of well, even if you're doing it from home, all you need is a laptop and an internet connection. And everyone loved it, especially the employees because no longer did you have to spend an hour of your day commuting to work and back every single day. As someone who has done it, I can tell you that commuting freaking sucks. But even after the COVID pandemic ended, remote work did not end. Well, maybe it went down slightly, but the reason that I think remote work remained the norm for such a long time is because we were in this job market where employees held all the leverage. We were in this job market where essentially companies were fighting to hire the employees like they were giving all these perks all these amazing benefits just to attract people to work for them instead of their competitors and remote work was one of these perks it would have been complete suicide for companies to not have remote work because they knew that their competitors were offering it and everyone that they wanted to hire would just go to those companies instead but now that we have shifted into this much worse job market for employees companies no longer really have to give these perks so why aren't they giving them? Well, the fact of the matter is that there's a lot of downsides when it comes to remote work, particularly for the companies themselves. Like just imagine you're a company right now. Like imagine you're the head of Amazon. You're paying all these rents for these massive offices, these massive crazy campuses that you've invested in and no one is working there because you're allowing everyone to work remotely. Why would you do that? And also you are seeing reports that productivity is going down because as much as you can do your work from your laptop, like again, as someone who's done it both ways, I can tell you that Zoom meetings are unfortunately not quite the same as in-person interaction. Again, if you're at the company and you're paying these employees all these wages, you want to maximize their productivity. That is just how it goes. So if we get into a situation where you no longer have to give these employees these perks, then in the long run, you're probably just not going to do that anymore and there's also other downsides when it comes to remote work like personally i experienced this firsthand when i was working in my job which ended up being almost entirely remote like i was able to work remotely every single day while overall obviously as an employee i loved it but there were certain things that i didn't like like for example there were some teammates that were in my team that i never met in person and i had no idea what they even looked like because they would not put their cameras on in our meetings so of course with this dynamic we didn't have any kind of like team dynamic like we didn't feel like a team which affected morale we weren't as excited to work together and it's not as easy to ask for help over slack as it is in person 
and in a different job when I worked in person. While I might not like to admit that, it was undeniable that productivity was much better when we were working in person. And now companies have clearly realized that and because they no longer have to give these perks, that is basically why they are doing it and why the trend is that companies are forcing people to go back to the office. So is this the end of remote work in software engineering? And I would say, unfortunately, the short answer is yes. Well, kind of. Obviously, I don't think we'll get to the world where there will be no remote work at all, but the trend is clear and I think the trend is going to continue. There's a bunch of other companies that have done the same thing. Meta has already shifted to a hybrid model, but they have to work from the office three days a week. And I think this is sort of perhaps where we will end up. Like companies will give some remote work, but they will also require you to at least come to the office like a couple of days a week or something like that. The big theme here is balance of power. Employees no longer hold the balance of power because the job market is so much more difficult. So companies don't have to offer these perks. And the reality is that most of the perks of remote work are for the employees where most of the cons are for the companies. And I even saw this when I was working on my own startup with my co-founders, which we partially built in person and partially online. Like it was undeniable that we got a lot more done and it was much easier to work together when we were working in person versus remotely. So while there will still be companies that will stick to fully remote and many companies will adopt some kind of a hybrid model, I don't think we will ever really go back to the days where fully remote work is the norm like it was in the pandemic. Because again, remember, that was never really the norm. It was always the exception. So with all that being said, it might sound like I'm now saying like, okay, you cannot work remotely as a developer anymore. It's not possible, but that is not really true. There are still ways to do that. It's just slightly more difficult and it's not so that you should take for given as much as before. First things first, if you're working a traditional job for a company, what you really need to do, like remember when we talked about balance of power, the reason why you don't have the same remote work privileges as before is because the balance of power is in favor of the company. So if you wanna reverse that, you need to essentially take back the power to yourself. So how the hell can you do that? Well, essentially this means that you need to show to the company that you are so valuable that they cannot afford to lose you so that you can essentially tell them like, Look, I want to work remotely. If you don't want to give it, that's fine, but I might go to a competitor. That is obviously much easier said than done. The more experienced you are, the more likely I think it is that they will allow remote work. And the smaller the company, the more power you might have to negotiate where you don't have these company-wide policies where everyone has to be at the office. The second thing I would look at is freelancing opportunities. Now, freelancing is often a much more flexible way to work than working with a traditional employment contract. I've talked about this on the channel before and there are a lot of fewer legal requirements in terms of where you have to work most developers that i see working as digital nomads or something like that are not working as a traditional employee but rather as a freelancer and they're simply doing many different freelance projects for a lot of different clients where they are essentially a hybrid between an employee and an entrepreneur so this is the second thing i would look at and the third thing is to obviously start your own company if you start your own company you can do whatever you want you can decide the policies again obviously much easier said than done but even as someone who did this like we started a tech company together we found that it was much easier to work in person although working it remotely obviously also worked and we just sort of had to work around that but in the long run if you want the most freedom then this is really going to be the only option and this is fortunately the position that i am able to be in right now as an entrepreneur where i work myself i can be wherever i want i've been spending the past six months going around the world like working from different countries so if you're someone who's now interested in perhaps one day starting your own company, then I highly, highly recommend you watch this video right here where I go through some of the very painful lessons that I learned from trying to do this on my own and failing so that you can not make the same very expensive mistakes as I did. So go watch that video next. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.